Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see the hook joint and its application where it is being used practically. So if you see hook joint, it is used to connect the two non-parallel intersecting shaft, and it is used when there is some slight miss angular alignment is there between the shaft that is input and output shaft. The, but uh, there are two types of joint that is single joint and double hook joint. The main disadvantage of this single hook joint is that the velocity ratio is not constant. So for that purpose, we are using double hook joint. So in the next slide, we will see what is difference between single hook and double hook joint. So these are the pictures of single and this is the single hook joint, which we are using in propeller shaft. Now this is the hook joint analysis. Now in this case, this is the top view and this is the front view. So here AB is one fork, which is attached to the driving fork. And CD is the fork which is attached to the driven shaft. Here, alpha is the shaft angle. So AB is in horizontal plane and CD fork is in vertical plane. So AB and CD will be both having a uh, circular motion. Here AB will be is as it is in horizontal plane, so it will be tra tracing circular path. While CD fork, it is in vertical plane, so it will be tracing an ellipse. So here theta and th th this theta is nothing but the Ang uh, angular displacement done by the fork AB and phi is the angular displacement done by the fork CD which is attached to the driven shaft. So here we have done the analysis so as to find the minimum and maximum speed. So after finding the maximum and minimum speed this is the polar diagram. So in this polar diagram if you see as I have told you AB is the fork which is attached to the driving shaft and CD is the fork which is attached to the driven shaft. So this circular path is traveled by the fork AB and this elliptical part is traveled by the fork CD which is attached to the driven shaft. So here the points 1 and 2 will be having maximum speed of input and the points uh, 3 and 4 will be having the minimum speed. So the major axis of the ellipse will be having maximum speed and the minor axis of the ellipse will be having minimum speed. But there is one condition where the driving and driven fork will be having same speed so these points are 5, 6, 7 and 8, where the speed of the input shaft, that is the driving fork AB and the speed of the driven shaft, that is the driving driven fork CD will be same. So this is the formulas for finding the maximum and minimum speed. Here omega is the angular velocity of driving shaft and omega V is the angular velocity of the driven shaft. You may take any notation, but for this now we have taken omega as the, the angular velocity of the driving shaft and omega 1 as the angular velocity of the driven shaft. So where the value of the omega 1 will be maximum for the given value of alpha. Alpha is nothing but the shaft angle. So this will be taking place at cos square theta is equal to 1. That is when the theta value is 0, 180 and 360 degree. For finding the maximum speed of driven shaft, we are using this formula. That is angular velocity of input shaft to the cos alpha. So this is the double loop joint. So in this case, I, as I have told you, the major drawback of the single loop joint is that there is possibility of not having the same speed of input and output. And uh, if there is slight misalignment, the frictional losses will be maximum. So in order to avoid that losses and in order to get the same speed of input and output, here is here I have shown some double loop joint animation. Here if you see, there will be single middle part joined by the two forks. So this is the input fork and this is the output fork. And so these are alpha is the driving angle and this middle element that I have shown that is the intermediate shaft, which is used for avoiding the losses as well as transmitting the same speed from input to output shaft. Thank you.